Hey there internet, Moose Boy here and uh, I decided I'd do a quick tutorial on how I set up a guitar. Now there are a lot of different ways to do this and I respect everybody else's opinion. Uh, I just wanted to um, kind of alleviate any sort of uh, fears you might have about setting up your own action on your guitar. I mean the advantages are you know number one you don't have to take it to a luthier uh, to set it up even though if you're not comfortable with it I would definitely say take it to a luthier if that's what makes you comfortable. Um, I've been playing for over 50 years and quite frankly I was totally terrified of setting my own action until about uh, about five six years ago and when I found out how easy it was and how much more I could customize the action on my guitars I just never looked back so again if this makes you uncomfortable please don't try and do it yourself uh, but having said that it's relatively easy okay so uh, this is a brand new Gibson SG right out of the box uh, set up from Gibson and they make some fine guitars no question about it uh, I don't happen to like the way that they set up their guitars from the factory that's just a personal opinion only but having said that I am the owner of the guitar and my opinion matters most on this particular guitar the one that I own okay so let's get about the process of actually setting the neck relief and uh, first thing you want to remember is start out with a fresh set of strings uh, make sure that the nut and the bridge is nice and clean and make sure that the guitar is in tune very important and uh, make sure that it's in tune to the tuning standard that you're going to use. If you're, uh, you know, kind of a metal guy, you may be tuning down to E flat or D or, you know, C sharp, whatever you want to tune to. But make sure that you've got the right strings, you know, the strings that you are planning on using, and that the guitar is in tune the way that you are going to normally tune it. You know, I'm an old guy. I go with standard guitar tuning. Okay. All right, so let's get to the uh, actual brass tacks of this. Now, uh, this guitar came with a little kit that has a uh, Phillips head and a uh, hex nut driver. Uh, not all of my guitars are like this. Some of them come with a uh, hex wrench, uh, but it just kind of depends on what the end of the truss rod looks like. And since this came with the guitar, I'm trusting that that's the right one. Okay, so let's get to it here. We use the Phillips head end of the tool to remove the two screws that cover up the truss rod. And boy, now we're getting into mystery territory, right guys? <laughs> okay, put those where I can find them. And I'm gonna slide that out of the way. And now we are looking at, right down here, the business end of the truss rod. And the truss rod basically runs along the length of the neck. And the purpose of the truss rod is to combat the, uh, the stress uh, or, or the bowing action that the strings put on the neck. Because when you think about it, the guitar neck is a lot like a big bow and arrow, you know. The arrow or the bow is normally straight, and then you put a string on it, and you, the harder you pull the string, the more it bows. Uh, the analogy is, is pretty darn close with the guitar. And when you think about it, you've got six strings all pulling it and making the neck bow in this fashion. So the truss rod basically will let you, you know, let you drop it, won't it? Uh, it'll let you adjust how much bow there is in the neck. You can adjust it so that it's, you know, pretty much all the way flat or that it's very bowed or in extreme cases, which you don't want to do, that it's bowed back. And if it's bowed back, you're going to get all kinds of fret buzz and nasty rattles and you don't want that. So right now the neck is like this and I want to flatten it out a bit. 
So to do that, I want to tighten the truss rod. Okay, now remember the old adage here, you got to think about it, looking at it from the business end here, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we're going to go right on this, we'll go ahead and fit that in, and we are going to start to turn it a little bit right. And I'm going to go by small increments here, just going to take a little bit at a time. And there are a lot more scientific ways to do this. There are feeler gauges and fretting the guitar here and here and checking the action. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I prefer to use these feeler gauges. You know, I, I like to check uh, how it feels to me. Uh, and I will generally check right at the seventh fret. That's getting better, but I still want it a little flatter. So I'll go ahead and tighten up a little more. The secret is taking it slow and checking your work. Okay, now we're getting a little better. That's starting to feel pretty good. Now, I want to make sure and check my tuning again because I've made some adjustments. So we'll go ahead and check it. And I'm going to usually find that when I go in that direction, the strings are going to go sharp a bit. fret buzz and it's starting to feel pretty close to what I want. I'm going to go just a little bit more and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, again, lefty loosey, righty tidy. We're going more for righty. I'm going to take it down just a little bit more. And sometimes, if you can't get in there all the way, it helps to detune your G and D strings really slack and move them out of the way if you need a little more angle on that. Okay, let's check again. feels darn nice to me. I'm going to check my tuning again. Yeah, I see it's gone a little bit sharp because I've flattened that neck out again. Put a little more tension on the strings and that made it sharp. close and I'm gonna live with that for a while. Uh, what I've found is that uh, if I let it sit overnight and then I check it again just to make sure that it hasn't resettled, that's usually a pretty good idea. Okay so now that has set pretty much the feel of the guitar in between the nut and right about the 12th fret. Um, if I felt 
that the action was still too high from about the nut of the 13th fret all the way end, all the way up to the end of the neck. Then I'd go ahead and make some compensation on the bridge. Now right now right now it feels pretty darn good. If I, uh, if I wanted to bring it down just a little bit, I could do that. Uh, let's see, they probably have a tool in the kit. Yeah, somewhere in here. <clears throat> yep. A hex key for setting the bridge height and uh, I'll just I'll just bring it down just a smidge. Oops, hang on. Yeah, you know, it's in pretty good shape. I don't know that I want to mess with it. pretty close. I don't think it needs much adjusting, but if it did, in between, you know, the 12th, 13th fret and the end of the neck, this is where that happens. Okay, let me check our tuning once more. Yeah, I see it went, it went out just a bit. to feel pretty darn good. Now, the warning that I want to give you is that since I have changed the bow on the neck and I may or may not have changed the height on my bridge, then the intonation may be off a little bit. Let's just kind of do it a little bit by ear here. Well, yeah, it's still pretty good here. It's, it's pretty close. It's not bad. Uh, I won't go into setting the intonation on this specific uh, tutorial. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and do another one at some other time. Uh, and that again takes some patience. You want to go slowly. Make sure that you know you've got good strings and uh, you know that they're all in tune with your specific brand of tuning. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, if you have wondered about how this is done, that it set your mind at ease a little bit and that it's not that difficult to do. Thanks for watching.